Holly, how long have you been doing bombshell a month for? Oh, you're so beautiful. It's gross. It's fucking gross. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> Oh. Oh, you look so good there. Oh, I, I was waiting for that dress. I just need the dress. <laughs> wow, you look the gorgeous. Dress? Yes. Can you imagine me in those earrings? Yeah, they look <laughs> really good on you. Hey guys, I'm Holly Randall. I am a second generation female adult filmmaker and I have been in this industry for over 23 years. That I think is gonna show, that shows up the best. Yeah. Not brighter. No, no it looks good the way it is. You're getting my like terrible nails. This is what happens when you have a kid. You don't have time to get your nails done. I started my bombshell series during quarantine, actually, because we couldn't shoot and we couldn't go out. And so I thought, okay, let me use this opportunity to build up my YouTube channel more, which was showing a lot of promise. And so I thought, okay, I'll just take girls that I've shot a bunch of and that I've shot podcasts with and I'll kind of feature them as like my girl of the month. Um, and I'll do like some extra content with them, just 12 questions for YouTube. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, so two more. Who are your biggest creative influences and how do they inspire you? We're picking up the 12 questions for her bombshell of the month interview. So I let the girls like take out some questions, choose the ones that they like the most so we can get the most authentic interview from them. Perfect. It would be something that's a little bit more magical than something so structural. I would love to be able to take people's sadness away and depression because I think we would just flow in a better direction and we'd have a lot less loneliness and we treat each other a lot better because we'd be talking to ourselves better. I met Holly via Instagram. So I want to say, I was actually just trying to figure that out. I think I started following her about a year ago and she like followed me back immediately. And then we met for the first time today. So today is the first day that I've ever met Kenzie and I've been really excited to shoot her because I can tell just from her photos that she's a beautiful girl and a wonderful model. Um, but you know, I didn't know personality what she was like, and she is so fucking cool. Thank you. Here she is saying she takes really bad BTS. Right when I met her, she's like, I'm not good at BTS she's though. She's fun. <laughs> she's really intelligent, as I learned from doing like a short little interview with her. Um, she's very business savvy. And she's just like here to get it done, but she's also here to have a really good time. And she and I just like vibed really well right off the bat. And she's literally like my new favorite girl. Today we are shooting in downtown Los Angeles. It's the place where all of the best locations are. Downtown LA is, it used to be an actual like downtown Los Angeles, very busy, um, the financial and business center, but it has fallen over the years and it's kind of more of a decrepit shell of what it once used to be. So um, unfortunately there is a lot of homelessness, there's a lot of crime, um, but there's also a lot of space, which is why downtown LA is where most of the locations are. 
So I feel like, I mean, I'm in this outfit where I get to play with silhouettes a lot more because we're doing so much light play. And we have this really cool mixture of like futuristic lights and some past tense vibes with these like old speakers. Welcome to Holly's Speaker Emporium. <laughs> One more time. Okay, but you got me popping up. Yeah, yeah. Did you get me saying welcome to Holly's Speaker Emporium? Start. I need the energy from the pop-up. <laughs> Welcome to Holly's Speaker Emporium. Speakers, speakers, speakers. Do you need speakers? Big speakers, small speakers, speakers that don't work, speakers that work, maybe, maybe not. We have all kinds of speakers at crazy prices, at crazy prices. At crazy prices. The stereo laser room was just something really unique that I'd never shot before, and so we thought, okay, we'll do something kind of modern and fun and slick with her there. I like to describe it as like an alien disco. Um, we had these old speakers just surrounded by me as a backdrop and then we had lasers and smoke coming through and I had this really just like sleek, well-fit black outfit because I just was a shadow. That's better, Steve. That gives me a little more contrast. We're trying to... Um, figure out like the perfect combo of balancing the colored lights and bringing in some white light too so we can see her, but we don't lose the drama of all of the color and craziness that we have going on here. So there's a lot of like tweaking that you gotta do before we start. Let's just talk about uh, the set real quick. The first look, we're doing like this laser room with speaker, speaker, speaker. The crazy prices. We are using mostly these back LED tubes. We've got some laser lights going on here. And uh, for the stills, we're using a hard um, strobe light, just like a 40 degree grid in a spot, just to give that like that nice poppy contrast. And what really makes a huge difference in this set is the fog. Spooky. But yeah, you need this fog to bring out all of these laser lights, all of the lights in the background. Otherwise you just have kind of like a black background and there's not really a lot of texture and interest to it. So it's the atmosphere that absolutely makes the difference in this shot. Embarrassing. My mom would just, were you there, Amber? I've been Did around you? your mom for No, but like, years. no, but it was like, it was constant, just flatulence, like just yeah, walking, just yeah, to the mom. point where like, you just couldn't comment on it anymore because yeah, it happened too it often. It was, what's the point? And, it, and she'd be like, hey, excuse me, but I fought. And it was so embarrassing because it was coming up to my daughter's one year birthday. And I, believe it or not, my parents were gonna meet my in-laws for the first time. They had never met my husband's um, family. And I was like, my mom's gonna fart in front of my mother-in-law the entire time, and it's gonna be horrifying. No one knew that the boyfriend was over, and my mom just like farts so loud. And like, that we were all upstairs, and then we like heard him make a noise, and then we were like, my mom was like, shit, I didn't know. And my little brother just goes, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Just to totally took the blame for mom. Like, God, Aww. mom. She's just like such a gassy woman. <laughs> okay, so there was this one summer that my dad would only wear a sarong 24 seven. He would come down to the office in the sarong. He'd have business meetings in the sarong. Amber can attest to this. I can. <laughs> yeah, and he just walked around and his like, and his balls were always hanging out. He's, My dad does not pee in the toilet. No, he only pees outside. He only pees outside. Talking. Yeah, but you say it like he whips his dick out like he wants to show people like, here's my penis. He it's, does, because it's they're, huge. They're, they're, <laughs> there's a purpose for him whipping he's, it out. He's whipping it out so he can pee outside. <laughs> but, because he has a huge penis. My dad is a big dick, okay? <laughs> now everybody fucking knows, even me. The second time my husband ever met him, he was skinny dipping, which he always oh, does, in the see. pool. And I brought him up to the pool. And he, of course, happened to be like bending over to get his pants with his ass to us. So my <laughs> husband's first view of my father was literally his asshole and saggy balls. 
This is my family. I am obsessed with this look. This is insane. I just like am so in character right now. I can't not be. Here. I'm pretty sure I want to be this character for the rest of my life. <laughs> I think I just married and adopted this persona <laughs> forever. My favorite part about today was utilizing this space right here where I was Jessica Rabbit and shooting the video part of it and getting to like dance like I was Marilyn Monroe on stage. I just want to do that forever. <laughs> With the adult industry, there's a lot of mystery and misunderstanding surrounding it. And so I think that the BTS, the fans really enjoy it because, you know, people always want to know like, what happens on set. I don't know what kind of fantasies they have in their head. Maybe like we're all like naked and having an orgy or it's some like really um, like dirty, uh, you know, sketchy kind of environment and it's it's not like that at all you know we're professionals we'd like to have fun and we do have fun while we're shooting but we take our job seriously we care about lighting we care about details um, we care about production and so I think that BTS really gives people an inside look at that and also gets to see like the performers and, and how they are you know as people very much you know like my podcast is as well so it's just a way to humanize the people that I shoot um, and also just the industry itself. Second. Okay, and one more. All right, I think we're done. That's a wrap. Woo! That was amazing. <laughs> Today was my first setback in the new year and I could honestly cry of happiness. I had no idea that becoming Jessica Rabbit was a dream of mine, and I think I'm, I'm gonna embody her for the rest of my life now. At least my career. <laughs> no, my life. Um, and everything went, oh my gosh. I'm just so fulfilled right now. <laughs>